hikers are a famously hard to impress bunch. Celebrity walking down the street? Psh, who cares? But all bets were off today when the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge arrived in the city for their first official visit. Prince William took a detour to meet political royalty at the White House, while Kate met hip hop royalty in Brooklyn. And their jam packed agenda has only just begun. Here's ABC's Amy Robach. Tonight, the hottest ticket in town was the Nets game at Brooklyn's Barclays Center. But the main attraction wasn't at center court. It was on the sidelines. The royal couple's New York City takeover is in full swing. All eyes were on William and Kate as they arrived at halftime to watch the Nets take on the Cleveland Cavaliers. At one point, even stopping to chat with American royalty Jay-Z and Beyonce. They even chatted with the king, King LeBron James, that is. Their whirlwind 72-hour sojourn kicked off yesterday, and Nightline dispatched a team of royal experts all over the city to cover every beat of their jam-packed schedule. The couple flew across the pond on a commercial British Airways flight, later on arriving at their royal palace away from home here at New York's Carlisle Hotel. This morning, the couple had different items on the agenda. Prince William awoke early, boarding a U.S. Airways shuttle to Reagan National Airport. That's right, the shuttle. The prince travels just like the rest of us. The royals are very keen not to take private jets. Mail Online's royal correspondent Rebecca English has been following their every move. When you're considering where he was going, which was first of all to pay a call on President Obama at the White House, it uh, might surprise some people. In D.C., he met with President Obama inside the Oval Office. During their conversation, Will let the president in on a fun little secret. During the drama of Kate's baby delivery last year, he forgot to ask her the gender of their baby. Somebody forgot to ask you, it's a boy. Yeah. So no, it's good. Afterwards, it was off to the World Bank for its third annual conference on international corruption and wildlife tracking. I am determined not to let the world's children grow up on a planet where our most iconic and endangered species have been wiped out, impoverishing us all. This is probably his most important speech to date, certainly his most high profile. Back in Manhattan, Kate started her day in Harlem, accompanied by New York City's First Lady Shirlane McRae visiting a youth development center, where fans of all sizes were waiting to meet Kate. But it turns out some of the children mistook her for a different princess. Do you remember who's coming to visit you today? Yes, yes. You know they think you're out of Frozen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, apparently real life princesses still don't hold a candle to the likes of Frozen Elsa. Robert Jobson is the royal editor for the Evening Standard. I think people, when they see her in the fresh, there's lots of cheers and lots of wooing and shouting. I think it's fantastic reception. Probably not since the days of Princess Diana have we seen anything like this sort of reaction. The rollout of the royal red carpet for Prince William and a five-month pregnant glowing Kate Middleton, reminiscent of Diana's splashy trips to the city all those years ago. Patrick Jepson was Princess sure Diana's we, chief of staff. Sure. Once she arrived, New York woke up and realized what a star they had. She was born to be a princess. Well, actually, you know, Amy, I would say she was born to be a queen. Diana famously changed the perception of AIDS at a Harlem hospital nearly 25 years ago. There were some very poignant moments on that first trip, most notably, I would think, holding that baby, holding that child who had AIDS. Just a simple gesture just by picking up a baby, hugging it. Diana was able to send a very important message. And William and Kate will also pay a visit to a City Kids Foundation project, the same charity William's mother, Princess Diana, actively helped support 25 years ago. Whenever you left a palace or a hotel, there was always a sense that around you, a great big show was about to start. You know, it was curtain up. And today is no different with William and Kate. Patrick, it was 25 years ago you walked through these doors yeah. with Princess Diana. What was it like? Well, I mean, it was fantastic, like it is now. Uh, it's, the, it's a wonderful, happy place. It was like walking into a party. And she was the belle at the ball. The Carlisle Hotel, also one of Diana's favorite hideaways, where she famously met JFK Jr. shortly before they both tragically died. He was setting up his magazine, George, and he asked the princess to be on the cover of the first issue. And she said, well, um, John, that's a very big honor, but really what I'd like to do is be on the cover of your 50th issue. Wow. Sadly, as we now know, for neither of them was that possible. Surprisingly, this is the couple's first ever trip to New York City. 
And unfortunately for Kate, the busy schedule means no shopping. Kate privately would have quite liked to maybe slip away to the shops. She loves shopping, she does it in London. I think it's highly unlikely that we will see her do that here because I think she's here to work. They're fitting in as much official stuff as they possibly can. After being separated for most of the day, Will and his wife met up once again as they joined Hillary and Chelsea Clinton for a conservation reception. Kate wearing this glamorous Tory birch coat with jeans for the event. And this is just day one. Tomorrow, there's a trip to the September 11th Memorial and a big event at the iconic Metropolitan Museum of Art. Sounds exhausting, but isn't this the way to play when you're in the city that never sleeps? There is a touch of the New Yorker about them in the sense that they are quite tough, they can be quite straight talking, um, they, they, you know, they do get down to business, and I think that they're all things that people in this city will like about them. For Nightline, I'm Amy Robach in New York.